Firefox extensions? Firefox extensions. What is an extension for Firefox? All right, well, an extension is an add-on or a plug-in that you want to put into Firefox, which just helps you navigate the Internet a lot easier, your, you know, your browser. Um, and honestly, a lot of these people have made products that you can use not only on Firefox, but IE Safari. Most of these are Firefox um, for Windows and Mac as well. So uh, the first one that I'm going to show you guys is this one called URL Fixer. And it's very um, useful for people who type fast. I type fast all the time. Basically what it does is if you look up in the address bar and you're typing something like Google and you know you type too fast and you type google.com, it'll fix it to .com for you. Um, there's a lot of web, a lot of URL um, names like edu or you know, dot, you know, domain names basically um, where you can type too fast and it'll fix it for you. Like you typed edt there and it, EDT switches, to and it switches to edu? That's if you handy. type IRS since we're talking about taxes. What is it? Instead of com, I always end up typing ko or c o j m or something like that. Just the typo because my fingers mash right. the keys incorrectly. It'll but. catch all those things for you, nice. definitely. Um, IRS dot you know gov or oh. something. It'll fix it for you like Evil. that. You know, it fixes a lot of things. The one thing that I found that it didn't fix, however, is a dot tv domain name. So if you were to accidentally top, type dl dot tb in. It's not going to catch no it. No love for the no dot love TV. No love for the dot TV. So uh, in the next revision, you guys might want to think about <laughs> <laughs> fixing that. Server not found. Pretty cool. Um, so my next two, one is called Speed Dial, one is called uh, Firefox Showcase, and they're from the people at MewWorks.net. Um, and Speed Dial is really cool. What it will do basically is it will assign uh, a website to your number keys, and so you, it's sort of like a hot hot tab basically. So if you look on the screen, I have set as the first one. You press Control One, and it will bring up DLTV is what I have for it. Control Two is your next site, Cranky Geeks. Control Three is PC Mac, or actually, no, I changed it to have a blog. Now I have a blog too. Um, if you do Control Shift and then the number, it'll open it in a new tab, so oh, you can keep cool. putting the tabs out as many as you as many as you want. Now, handy. Yeah, Speed Dial is pretty awesome because what you can have it do is you can have it set up to nine of your favorite. Um, websites to open when you open your browser. And what you want to do is you want to go to the tools menu, go to add-ons, and then you see here it's speed dial, go to options, and two, two um, tabs that I would suggest you click are the load in, load in blank new tabs. Mm -hmm. It takes some getting used to at first, but I'll show you what it does. Load in blank new tabs, and then also browsing area context menu. I, I would check that off, and I'll show you why. So now when I do like a control T or I open a new tab, it will open all my favorite nine websites. And what I can do from here is I can edit, you know, say I want to change this one to pcmag.com. Whoops, if I could type. Nice. So this becomes your default start page this when you have the speed start dial page. Yeah, extension you, installed. Exactly. When you have the speed dial extension installed. If you open a new window, it'll take you to your home page, but then if you hit refresh, it'll show all your favorite nine you know, websites. I like that. Can you just click on any one of you those can to open on it up? One, oh, I see. It will open it up. You know, you can, there are also shortcuts too. So, uh, like I was saying earlier, with Mac users, you, it's a little difficult because they have their hotkey set at F12 for expose. So, if you hit X, F12 for, on a Mac, um, it'll bring up expose. If you hit it on a PC, it'll show you all the main windows. It pops up in a separate window. If you hit shift, or sorry, shift F12, it'll show you the two current tabs that you have open in this window. Um, on a Mac, you can you know reconfigure it. There are tons of options, actually, if you go into the add-on section. There are options for the thumbnails, how you control it, advanced options. You know, here's your keyboard controls. Um, also, the other one that I was talking about was Showcase. And there are a lot, a lot of options in here. You can see there's, I didn't even have time to play with all of them. But now you you're saying this is a similar program in terms it's, of... Uh... It's made by the same people. And what Showcase oh. will do is... Here. Show me what Showcase does. Oh, there we go. Yeah, here we go. So Showcase will you know, pull up all those windows, like I said, in a different tab. It will show every single window that you have in Firefox available right now. So I have this browser open with all these windows, this browser open with all these windows, and then this browser. So if I hit that F12, it's going to show me everything I have here. Also, like I said, you can just click on it and we'll go right there. The other cool thing is this started off in Opera, and this is uh, sort of a rehash for Firefox. And what you couldn't do before in Firefox was move these windows around. So, you know, say 
I want DLTV to be my favorite one. I move it there. I want Cranky Geeks to be my favorite website. I want it to go there first. Um, and so that has been addressed in this latest one? That has version? been addressed in the latest one. And nice. Yeah, it's very cool just to be able to move these around and, uh, you know, have your hotkeys, basically, so you can start new things. That ain't cool. Now, my next Firefox plug-in is this one called Zotero. And this one is very good if you're a student or if you're a research person doing a lot of research. Um, you go to Zotero.org and download their Firefox extension. And they have a nice little tour here, too, which you can watch uh, to show you how to do it. But basically, what this does is it will catalog and cite and collect and manage all your research links and everything um, from sites all over the internet. So say you go to Amazon.com and you're looking for a book. Like uh, earlier I was looking for Harry Potter. Mr. Potter. Mr. Potter. So once you install Zotero, um, you can click on the book. You know, say you're on a research site or say you're on Amazon.com. You click on the link for the book and say you want to save this title for later. You don't want to put it in wish list or add to your shopping list. If you go down to the bottom right corner of your browser down here or press Control-Alt-Z, there is a button that says Zotero. And if you click that, and you zoom back out a little uh -huh. bit, it'll show you. And I've researched sort of these links all across the internet. Uh, these are the ones that I have saved. Now, if you look back up in the top in the address bar. Now, when you did that, did it just add the page you were on to this list? Not yet. So oh, okay. this, is, this is the interface for Zotero. But if you go back to the top of the address bar, you'll see here in the corner it says Save to Zotero. Uh -huh. You just save that link, and down here at the bottom it says Saving Item. You open Zotero back up. You open Zotero back up, and it has saved your new item right here on the side. Um, it will, you can put notes into it, you can put attachments, you can put tags so that it's all kind of related. Um, but the coolest part of this info tab I found is this locate button right here. If you click locate, it will take this book out and it will bring you to worldcat.org, which is a, a library website basically, and it will tell you where you can find this book, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, in your nearest local libraries. Very cool. It's very cool because then you can go, say you want to go to the San Francisco State Library, you know, I'll click there. And you can probably reserve your book right online and see if it's available, which is a which is a very very cool way to do things. Now another thing is so it's really instead of just being a straight up bookmarking tool, it allows you then to add data to that right. in terms of the other tabs that were available for the information that I can save, and it can also drive you to a br brick and mortar or even online brick and mortar, retailers exactly. if you need to actually obtain the the reference material. Exactly, and, and one of the cooler things about Zotero that I found is if you say you're doing a, a you know, a research project, a thesis or something, and you needed to do a bibliography, and we all know how much big bibliographies suck. Um, you can basically just highlight all of these and then right-click, and down here it'll say Create Bibliography from Selected Items. And it'll give you a list of, you know, which bibliography, you know, standards you want to use. And basically you'd probably use Chicago Manual Style because that's what most people use. Um, you can save it as a real text file. Click OK. It'll ask you where you want to go. Research... Dot .rtf, and then uh, you can open that file on the desktop, and here it has your bibliography all put out for you. you know, oh, it, nice. It's great. It puts it in the order it needs to go in. It puts the year, the numbers, if you need it. You know, you could probably um, modify it a little bit to make it more accurate, you know, depending on what your professor or whatever needs to look at. Excellent. I think I'm pretty familiar with this next one up. Yeah, bug me not. Bug Speaking me of not. Veronica Belmont, <laughs> she showed this off a little while ago. Oh, did she? Yeah. yeah. This is just a terrific tool. Bug me not's great. You can go here, actually, uh, to bugmenot.com and get the Firefox extension here. Um, you can also just look for certain things here. Like, I know New York Times is sort of notorious for being, you know, asking you to log in for certain things. So you can go here and type in newyorktimes.com. It'll bring up a bunch of different logins that you could use when it starts working. You could use all these different logins if you wanted to, you know, type the name and the password. Well, if you download the Firefox extension instead, you know, anytime you come up to a website which makes you log in, um, you know, if it asks you for a login or here you want to log in, you just click on login, you right click, and down at the bottom here it'll say log in with Bug Me Not. So you don't have to, you know, give your email address or sign up with a profile. You know, it'll just log you right in. And you can you use know, one that somebody else has already created and that, added to the Bug Me Out database. Right, exactly. And saying. if that's not working, you can actually go back, and there are different options where you can say, you know, 
try next account. It'll <laughs> list different, you know, usernames if you want to try those if the first one's not working. Well, that's you can handy. also report a successful login. Say, you know, you wanted to donate yours to Bug Me Not. You can uh, report successful login, and they will take your username and password and and put that in. I find Bug Me, Bug Me Not's uh, very effective for sites that are offering free content where all you have to do is right. just register. They do not. This service does not work for paid content, for paid content. sites. They're they're pretty good about policing that. Uh, because they should. Yeah, they should. And, you know, just you can sort of go to Bug Me Not and just play around with what websites you think might work. Um, I found some pretty interesting ones, which... <laughs> oh, I'm sure there's plenty of, <laughs> plenty of interesting <laughs> ones on there. Um, and so, finally. And finally, my favorite um, plugin that I found so far is called PickLens. Um, now, PickLens, they also have a, a cousin program called Cool Iris, which came out first. And basically what Cool Iris did is it would let you hover over a link, and then it would show you a preview in a window of what that website was. And then you could click on it you know, just to see if you didn't want to go and actually load the web page. Oh, okay. Cool Iris is, is a very cool application that I've installed into Firefox. Works on Windows, Mac, Firefox, IE, or Safari. Um, and what it does is it ba- basically takes all your, all your pictures on a website and aggregates them into a very cool interface. Let's say I went to you know, images.google.com and like last night we had a lunar eclipse. We did? We did. We missed it because it was kind of foggy. Ah, uh, okay. But... Um, so that's why I'm looking at it now. So once you install uh, PicLens on your Firefox or whichever browser, you'll see that on your pictures over here, yeah, there's a little button. play button will come up. And what you want to do is just click the play button, and it brings up this nice interface, which you can just drag and drag and see every picture that Google brings up that's related to a lunar eclipse. You can also roll out and oh, zoom out. Is this out. more than just the images that were on the page we were currently yeah, at? Yeah, it'll keep, it'll keep going. You can keep going, keep going, keep going, and it will just continue. You see down here these, it's kind of hard to tell on, on, the, on the web, but oh, no, it'll just keep pulling images related to lunar eclipse. Now, it's cool because you can just you know, zoom in as far as you want, zoom out as far as you want, or if you double-click on a picture, it'll bring it full screen. You know, you can... Make it a slideshow. It'll move from each picture to the next. Very cool. Um, the other cool thing is if you click up here in your search bar, you'll see other options other than Google. There's Yahoo, there's Flickr, Photo Bucket, DeviantArt, and there's a few other things. So, like, say I clicked on Flickr. Oh, so you can do this with your own account? You can do this with anything. So, VN's going to hate me, but <laughs> I'm going to look up VN on Flickr. And see, it just pulls it up in the same interface. You can make it full screen. Hey these, now. these are pictures we found of VN on. Sure enough. On now this, Flickr. this did, okay. This did a search. Oh, specifically it's on Flickr. And specifically pulls up. on Flickr, right? If you wanted to do, you know, something Yahoo. I don't know. There's nothing on VN on Yahoo. Maybe on Google. <laughs> She's gonna hate me for that. Um, that's one very of the, cool. I like that interface, though. Th- that's very cool. But the coolest part of PicLens that I think I found is, you know, everybody out there sort of has a social networking site, and people use Facebook or MySpace. I found on MySpace something really cool. So I'm going to log into my profile. I'm logged in, and I have my friends list down here. And instead of just taking the pictures from this whole page, what it does with MySpace is, say I want to look at pictures of my mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> So it takes it to all of her pictures in her main photo folder. So, you know, and then you double click again. That's me Aww. and my little cousin. And that's me and my sister. Or my, my mom and my sister. That's me and my mom and my brother. So basically what it does is you can just take that and look at any of your friends on your MySpace and click that little play button. And uh, it'll, you know, take you to your my, my their favorite photo space. Nice. Which is pretty cool. And also it has... Um, implementation for WordPress, which I think we're going to do a segment on soon. Uh, I could, plugins I could for see WordPress. that coming. So there's a ton. What do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, six extensions Links for Links are going Firefox. to be on the website. Yeah. Awesome. You guys will love them. Excellent. 